basketball coach? Uh, well, I was actually a wrestler when, when I was growing up, and I, uh, I grew up on a dairy farm in northern Minnesota. There wasn't much for gymnastics up there. And uh, they, they thought, when I moved to the cities, they thought that uh, it would be a better idea if I got into dance to work with, to, to help my wrestling, my footwork. And I, I lasted about four hours in a tap class, and there was a gymnastics class going on next to me, so I decided to get into that. Uh, and then from there on, it was just, more fun than all the other stuff I had, I had done at that point. So one thing led to another and, and uh, put myself through college coaching and it wasn't my, my plan in life, but it's, it's where I ended up. So you never competed? You I competed for years, <laughs> yeah. I, I competed all the way junior, junior Olympic, all the way through. Um, I was recruited to the Air Force Academy, who's coming here tomorrow night, and, uh, and ended up going to the University of Minnesota. Well, it, it, that, it, in gymnastics, being ranked is, is good at the end of the year. So, you know, and it's basically the same thing as football or basketball or anything at this point. It's good to be ranked at this point because it gives your girls some confidence. It gives them uh, something to shoot for. But you got to be careful you don't put, you know, the, the cart ahead of the horse. You, it, being ranked right now, if we start believing in ourselves, believing in our ranking a little too much and not in ourselves enough, I think we can get away from it. Uh, from what we're trying to accomplish here. So uh, the one thing I take from the victory last week is it was a number 12 team in the country and they had just beaten Alabama and uh, we did a really good job against them. So we handled the pressure well and uh, we executed our, our routines pretty well and they had a good night. So that night you match them up, we did a really good job and it shows that we should be at least 12th in the country. I'm reflecting back on there was a crowd of over 6,000 in attendance. Um, how are your girls feeding off the crowd, the energy of that crowd? Well, the, it, we joke that it's not hard to motivate our girls to get up for home meets. Uh, in the SEC, it's, it's all about the crowd. We recruited these girls here because of the fan base that we have. Uh, they want to perform in front of people. It, it helps their adrenaline. They're, they're excited. They want to please their fans. Um, but at the same time, I would say that I don't think they handled it well last Friday as well as they could have. Uh, we, we were running out of energy at the end. I felt like the adrenaline, uh, w w they didn't, especially our floor lineup girls didn't handle the adrenaline as well as we'd have hoped. So it was a good learning experience for us because it's only gonna get tougher. You know, we're gonna get bigger and bigger crowds whether we're on the road or at home and, and we need to be able to handle it. It seems like you guys are almost over the last uh, couple seasons that you built up, you guys are almost in the break of becoming one of you know, the classes one more, you know, big win. What is it going to take to become, you know, a Florida-like program for Auburn to be considered in that triple D category? Uh, recruiting, uh, reputation, and depth. Uh, we've we've improved our reputation through recruiting, and uh, we're starting to get really talented girls on the team, and not just four or five out of our six. We're, we're starting to get eight or nine. That, uh, that we can start rolling people in. That's what we're gonna do tomorrow night is we're gonna give some other people an opportunity to compete who haven't had an opportunity in the first three meets on purpose because we feel we're deep enough that we can score with anybody in the country, even with our alternate or our second alternate. So in order to, to, to move up the ladder in gymnastics, it takes a long time because reputation, uh, it, it helps you with your recruiting. We're recruiting out to eighth grade right now, so uh, if, if you're recruiting eighth graders, that means you're not turning this boat around in, in three or four years. So. Um, in most sports, we have that next man up mentality. Um, for your girls, for the ball team, how do they stay ready to compete and stay focused? Well, tomorrow night's a perfect example. We, we can replicate that a little bit through practice where we do rest some of our normal people that, we're, that, that are in the lineup. Uh, but you, 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 that only lasts so long. I mean, you got to get them into competition, and the and they have to be ready. And you, you can't put them in and let them not be successful because then they probably won't make it back in. Uh, so we've our goal was to get through three meets and then reassess where we are and try to develop some depth so that we can get to the mid-season point and then start solidifying our lineup. So uh, 
half of tomorrow night is about developing depth, and the other half is about keeping them sharp. Coach, I talked to one of your girls who was talking about the Alabama game. How hard is it to keep them focused on tomorrow night's match with the Alabama match moving and other teams in the championship? They just talked about how much they'll play each other and how big a rivalry is. Is it hard to keep them focused for Air Force when Alabama's around the corner? I think anytime Alabama's around the corner, it's hard to keep the team focused. Uh, but there's, there's not a whole lot of room in gymnastics to be unfocused. Uh, there's no, there's no way to do what we do half speed or distracted, uh, or, or you might not get another opportunity. Uh, so I think it's hard during practice time to keep them focused. I think meet time, it, they'll, they'll dial in and be focused on it. Um, but it's also hard for the coaching staff because you're, you're, you're managing your, your lineups because you, you, it's not just Alabama coming up, it's Alabama, LSU, Georgia, it's this whole run of quality SEC opponents that we've got to make sure that our girls are healthy. So uh, it, it, it's planning and looking forward, but also trying to stay focused on the job at hand. You talked about how recruiting is at this you know, critical to make you know, it's on the national program. What do you try, what is your sales pitch to these girls that come into your program you know, and on an unofficial visit? What are you telling them about this program and you know, what do you think the future of this program is like? Well, Auburn is a really good place to sell. Uh, it's, it's a family environment, and that's what a lot of these girls are looking for. Uh, it, if you've talked to the, any of these girls about their academics, most of them are really pretty smart, pretty academic, um, either, either you know, geared towards engineering or pre-med of some sort. So uh, the, the campus and the academics and the, and the community sells. Uh, but there's also a, a few ways of going about coaching gymnastics, and, and we're more of a athlete first mentality. If, if you watch the meet, the coaches aren't overly involved. We try to let the athletes run the show a little bit. Um, that's on purpose. And, uh, and some schools don't do that. So they, they, you, you basically try to set yourself apart from the way other people do things. And, and the way we recruit, the way we manage, all of that stuff comes into play. So. I think they, I, I do think one of the other things that, that we do a, a good job with is we, we recruit all around athletes. There's a, a philosophy that you try to recruit girls who are really good at one or two events and, and get them geared for that event. And then there's the other philosophy we're trying to get a whole bunch of all around girls, girls who are good at all four events and you try to maximize what you can out of them. Uh, most of the girls don't want to sit around for two and a half hours of a practice just to work one event. So uh, our goal is to recruit all around athletes and I think that's why we've got a lot of depth. You said in the Arkansas meet that the girls were losing their enthusiasm and excitement at the end of the game or at the end of the meet. Um, so what have you done in the past week to prepare and make sure that that excitement is still there? I think it's more physical than, I, I think they let the emotions get away from them. I, I, I would say rather than losing it, I would say they, they didn't control their enthusiasm early real well. They, it's really easy when 6,000 people are screaming just at you that you get carried away and you burn yourself up a little bit. And uh, we, we manage, if you watch the girls on the floor, that uh, many of them are, are taking applesauce or something during the meet because most of them don't like to eat. You don't really want to flip that many times with food in your stomach, but you do need to keep your energy up. So a lot of them, uh, I think that was part of the management issue. Uh, they let their energy get away from them. And if you're in the floor lineup, what we've been doing this week is it, people in the floor lineup have to be very careful. Many of them will be sitting down at beam rather than standing up because their legs are starting to, to fade away. You know, they'll have been on their, their feet for four hours and you really don't want to go flip twist and, uh, and land on your feet or flip twist and land on your face, one of the two, so. Speaking of that, I talked to Brittany. She talked about how big it was to be big charge plays and the role of boosters in the program. How good does it feel to be handed on a full break and beating your teams to show the people who invest in your program that it's paying off in some way for turning those two tables? Well, a, a big part of that is we just want to compete on an even playing field. And those other teams, you know, the SEC is the best conference for gymnastics uh, across the country. Uh, it, it's 
it's amazing the, the SEC run that they've had for national championships and top three finishes and, and, and attendance and all of that type of stuff. But when you're in a conference like that, you're up against people who are extremely well funded, uh, well taken care of, and their expectations are to win national championships. Well, they're, they're treated to, to win national championships. The expectation's there, but, but, but it's also, they're treating them to win it. Uh, it. When I got here, that was one of the things that we were, the administration and, and us as a coaching staff really were trying to figure out what's the best way to move forward so that we can start you know, getting what we need out of this program. So it, it's good that, that we're getting it. It's, it's really good that, we're, that it seems to be paying off. Um, but you know, the whole charter thing, that's, a, that's all about the athlete. That's the health of our athletes. And, uh, and, and in the end, it actually helps recruiting because we can actually stand up against some of the other teams that we were losing kids to. Well, to, to get one, it would be tough. Uh, the easy answer would be Bree, just because of what she's gone through and the, the example that she set. You know, she tore both Achilles last Valentine's Day. She doesn't let me forget that she remembers it's Valentine's Day. Um, and for her to come back, I think it's really set the tone for, for effort and determination in the gym and, uh, and making sure that they stay focused on what's really important. It's really easy to look across the gym after you felt sorry for yourself and see her continue to push and, uh, and, and come back from what she's done and, and basically pick it up and go a little harder. I actually said with Bree, um, she's great, and she said you've been here since her freshman year, maybe a year or longer. How do you think the program has evolved since you've been here? Has she kind of been along with you for the ride, you know? She, yeah, uh, well, that senior class, the whole senior class, uh, and oh, Bree's one of them. Senior? Yeah, uh, five. Five, okay. Uh, and you know, when they got here, that was my second year. We, that was my first signing class. That was my second year, and we challenged them. We said, look, this, this program is in your hands because this will be that class that hopefully by the time you're seniors, this program's starting to reflect what you guys want from it. And this is about what they want, and they, they all want to win. They all, you know, we're all competitive, and, uh, and, and we challenged them. So I think the, the program re reflects the athlete as much as anything else. So. Uh, you know, we're really good now because Bree and, and, and her fellow seniors have put a lot of work in and a lot of, you know, blood, sweat, and tears. And she actually said you picked the music. We'll see you with your headphones jamming out in the summer. Was, was that just always been a thing? Uh, I, I was in a band for 10 years. Okay. And, <laughs> and uh, so I, I have my own recording studio. And I have a couple of them. Uh, I have one still in Minneapolis. But, um, yeah, that's, that's not, I don't really pick it out for them. They, they try to give me what they think works. <laughs> Many times it doesn't, but, uh, but yeah, no, I cut the music for them, and, and so most of the stuff out there is, is either picked by the athlete or picked by somebody on the coaching staff, and then we've cut it and choreographed it. I spoke with uh, Alexis Ramirez, and she mentioned you coached her, she was one of her first coaches, and she's coming up now, you're coaching her again here at a collegiate level. What's that, what's that like? Well, you know, I got to question it every once in a while, but she's, she was, I think she was uh, coached by one of my family, either my brother, myself, my wife, uh, for all but six months of her career. So it's, it's a. What's, what's that like to see her develop over the course of the starting line and doing that? You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not really good at looking what I've done with people, but it, it, I look at what my brother did with her, because when I went away to college, uh, to coach college, he took over, and she, she's extremely talented. She, she was a junior elite, uh, which is a, the second highest that you can possibly get in the country. And, um, and, and he, he built her into a national floor champ, and, and uh, you know, it, obviously it's 95% it's Lexus, but you gotta be guided well. So I, I look at it, and, and, it's, and, and I take pride in it because it's my family. My, my wife did a great job giving her the basics that she needed, because she basically started her out. And then, uh, and then my brother finished her off. I was just in the middle, plugging away, and now I'm at the end, I guess. Hopefully, I don't screw it up too bad. Just a couple more questions, guys. So, if you got something specific about an athlete you talked to, now's the time to holler. Would you say that obviously Caitlin, as a is kind of the face right now of this program? You know, she, what she's done since she's been here is pretty phenomenal. 
how is it, is it difficult to not let her become, you know, the constant interview for the media, the constant face? Do you try to make sure all the girls are included in her, you know, success and make sure it's a team sport? Because I feel like gymnastics it could go individual or it could go team. And when I was talking to Caitlin, she really made sure she wasn't, you know, always the face of the program. Yeah, I think we man try to manage that a little bit. Uh, not not a whole lot. Um, usually people step up and take over. The main reason I would manage that is I just don't want too much on her shoulders. Uh, but in, it, from a coaching perspective, Caitlin's been phenomenal for us. But you, you win, you, you qualify to these big meets, you finish top three because of your first two girls in the lineup. So it, it because I know what she's gonna do for us. I know what the, the, the bottom three, the, the, the three big guns on every event are gonna do. Now they have to do their job, but, uh, but the first three are really gonna determine, you know, that you can, I, I've been a part of losing a national championship by .025. So it, it comes down to really everybody. Yeah. So uh, I think it's important that we pick out the people who've risen to the occasion that a lot of people don't recognize. You know, Caitlin, might have had, uh, might have won the all around and, and really be pretty frustrated with, with her performance yeah. when somebody else has really stepped up. So I guess that's really the trick with us. Last question, anybody? Burning question? Um, how has having those transitions become a competition? Not, it, it hasn't gone as smoothly as I'd liked, uh, mainly due to injury. She, she, her elite career finished on a sour note. She, she beat up her ankle pretty badly. And when she got here, she wasn't, you know, she wasn't able to do anything for I think four months, before two months before she got her in her first two months here. So I, I wish it would have gone smoother for her, but uh, but she's really, really doing well now. She's going to start breaking into lineups now, and, and uh, you know, once it's funny once you get them healthy, what what they're capable of doing. Uh, I do think she's a, she's an international elite, and for you guys who don't know what that is, that's. She was basically the alternate to the world championship team last year. And, uh, and it's a completely different focus than being on the team. I think she'd be the first to tell you that the, the pressure is completely different between that and letting your teammates down. And that, that's the biggest thing she's had to learn through this whole preseason is uh, that sometimes uh, it, it, it's easier to let yourself down than to let your teammates down. So she's, she's really done a good job with it. And, and uh, I think we're going to see some good things here pretty soon.